Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about our starting fuel as well as our fuel compensation tables. So when we go to fire off an engine, we're gonna find we have a prime pulse table, a cranking fuel table, and a post-start enrichment table. In addition to this, once the engine has came up and started to run as the engine's cold, we'll find we have an engine coolant temp modifier. It's gonna be adding fuel. Um, that's going to allow the engine to have stable combustion as it comes up to operating temperature. We're also gonna have an air temp compensation table. It's going to add or subtract fuel based on the air temperature. As the density changes, as the air temp goes down, we have to add fuel. As the air temp gets hotter, the density is going to drop and we'll have to have less fuel. So we're going to find we have all kinds of things to take a look at. I'm going to be showing you very clearly how these tables work so you're able to implement them in your tuning strategy correctly and you'll be able to get the desired result of having an engine that's going to crank and fire up and run properly and have a proper air fuel as it's warming up. So without further wait, let's jump into the video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're going to be taking a look at our cranking, our post-start fuel, and some compensation tables we have going on, such as the intake air temp and the engine coolant temp compensation. Now, in the last video, we went over our main fuel table. We understand that this is going to be injection time-based strategy. So the values in our table here are going to be our roll injector pulse width. We'll move the value up if we want more fuel, move the value down if we want less fuel. There's not going to be a whole lot to the table here. There's going to be no additional math crunching going on in the background such as we'd find with a fuel flow rate based fuel strategy and a volumetric efficiency based fuel strategy. Now, I did mention in the last video, if you're confused about the different fuel strategies for different engine management systems, or you're curious to learn about what other engine management systems use for potential fuel strategies, there is an excellent video I have in the EFI Advanced course library called Fuel Strategies. You can check that out. It'll explain everything a little bit more in depth. Now, we're going to be concentrating first in this video on the cranking fuel. Now, the cranking fuel is not going to be sourcing anything from our main fuel table, so it's going to be a little bit unique. We'll actually have two different tables that are going to be aiding the engine in starting as fast as possible. So, if we take a look here, we're going to find we have a prime pulse table and we find an engine start table. Now, the prime pulse table is going to act like a choke on a carb, where we're going to be priming it with a whole bunch of fuel right off the bat to get it to fire as quick as possible. What's unique about the prime pulse table is it's going to only be spraying the fuel for the first one or two full engine revolutions as the engine is cranking over. It's trying to get the fuel into the engine as quickly as possible and then allow it to start as fast as possible. So this table is gonna be based on our coolant temp. We can see here 50 degrees is the start of the table and 212 is gonna be the top of the table here. And we find the values in the table are gonna be milliseconds. So here at 50 uh, degrees coolant temp and lower, we're gonna be spraying in 65 milliseconds of fuel. That's a tremendous amount of fuel coming from the injector. Now, if you're going to be comparing this on idle, on a warm engine, on a relatively large injector, let's say a thousand to two thousand cc injector, we'll be finding we're spraying right around one to two milliseconds.